imagine what it's like for me. We welcome you now to the post-game press conference for the victorious Arkansas Razorbacks. I'm joined on the podium by head coach Mike Neighbors and two of the star student athletes from today's game, Chelsea Dungy and Alexis Tolfrey. A little reminder of the format. First and foremost, please silence your cell phones if you have those on right now. We're going to take an opening statement from Coach Neighbors. Then we will direct questions, please, to the student athletes. If you're asking a question of a student athlete, please use her name before you ask the question. Then we will be taking questions for Coach Neighbors after the student athletes are dismissed. When asking a question, please be sure to state your name and media affiliation. With that, Coach Neighbors, please start. After watching Auburn play yesterday live, I was really scared about um, how well they had been playing down the stretch. Uh, they had a Mississippi State in overtime. They had a win over LSU, played Tennessee to the last buzzer, and then they played great yesterday. So they had our attention. We knew that in the first part of the game it would be to their advantage having played yesterday, and that obviously was the case. Uh, but I was really proud of the way our kids stuck together. There was no panic through the first substitution and media timeout, and we got it back together. And I thought from that first six minutes on as our most complete game of the year against a quality team. Questions now, please, for the student athletes. Alyssa Orange, Pictorial Nation, uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas. Alexis, um, you had 20 points in the first half. You end with 30. Um, but when we talked yesterday, you talked about this pace and you liked the matchup with Auburn. What were you able to see that got you so open, especially behind the arc? Uh, well, I just, you know, ran what he told us to run. I, I was in the middle, and then he told me to cut out. And um, my teammates really found me open most of the time. Um, they found me when I was hot, and they just kept coming to me. Chelsea, how important was it for this team to get this first win, kind of get that pressure off your back a little bit and, and advance? Yeah. Um, it's a big win. Um, like, it's a big win. You have to win to even advance in the tournament. So um, we just take it game by game. Alexis, uh, Paul Martin on behalf of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what happened in the timeout? What what switched after that? <laughs> um, just the first time out, he told us to come out and play loose um, and have fun with it. And I think that's what we did. We just came out and just started having fun. Um, not really um, worried about like the outcome of our shots because every shot we took are shots that we make every day in practice. And so um, coach telling us to go out and play loose, we just that's what we did. Tyler Butler from Sports and Culture, Sports Media. Uh, Alexis, what really got you going in that second quarter? It seemed like everybody was uh, – shots was off in the first, and then you got extremely hot in that second. What seemed to open up for you? Uh, I mean, well, I was just taking shots that I, I normally hit, and, I mean, they weren't falling at first, but they started falling for me, um, which is something that Coach always has confidence in me to do. Um, and I just found the, op the open spaces in their zone, and my teammates found me when I was open. Chelsea, uh, is there two questions. One, is there something about this building that, <laughs> that lets, lets this team kind of catch fire like that? And then secondly, is there a, a kind of a sense of heightened expectations based on that run at all? Um, you know, in tournament time, we change our – we have a different mentality. We're um, – out to be back in the championship like we were last year. Um, you know, we stick together. We know what it takes. We've been here before. We know what it takes um, to get there again. We will be petitioning to move all home games here next year. <laughs> wow, that's Hunter, get to work on that. <laughs> Do we have any more questions for our student athletes? Ladies, thank you very much for joining us. Opening the floor now for questions for Coach Neighbors. And again, please state your name and media affiliation before you ask a question. Alyssa Orange, Pictorial Nation, Fayetteville, Arkansas. Hey. Oh, sorry, can I write that down real quick? Yep. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, that start, the 8-0 run that, our, that Auburn started off to, 
where were you at and did you feel like maybe they were a little distracted and or once you were able to call that timeout, they kind of were able to settle back down? It happens and we knew it. We talked about we actually talked about it last night when in between dark games. It happens. It is part of this tournament when it's the advantage to that first team that has already played the day before. We used it to our advantage last year, and so our kids knew it. I hate that we were right about it. I did try to challenge them to not let that happen. I said great teams would not allow it to happen. Good teams, well, it will happen to, but they will get over it quickly. So we've still got room to grow. We can get over that, but it is a hard thing to do. So I didn't try not to show any emotion. We made a quick substitution. I was dead set on not taking a timeout. Timeouts have become a little more precious since we can advance it late in the game and we only get four. So we had the game plan that if it did indeed happen, we were going to make a quick sub. And we did. And it took them to go through it and get it out of their system too. And then when we got back to our, our starters, I thought from that point on we were pretty under control. So knowing that it was coming was a huge part of it. I hate that it did happen, but that's credit to Auburn and the way that they did play. Uh, but it was obvious it was going to happen pretty quick if we didn't get a timeout and make a substitution. Uh, Paul Martin, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Uh, Coach, was there something you saw in that other than just needing to settle your team down, yeah. seven people? Like, was it – It's uncharacteristic stuff. You know, Mac turns it over, which that's not what Mac does. Uh, Lex got a three blocked. That's not what – she's not open. If you get a three-point shot, you're not open. We didn't get back in transition. We were out of position defensively. So it was a complete lack of everybody's focus, start, whatever you want to write down, you'd be accurate in saying it was a complete uh, failure on all levels. But it was so much time left. Let's not panic. Let's not fire anybody. Uh, let's just fix the problem. Let's be solutional. Um, that became something that we got in the middle of the year. One of the kids said, Coach, give me something solutional because I get a tendency just to point out f facts and things, and they said, give me something that's solutional. And that word really stuck with me, uh, and I've been using it ever since. I will give the person due credit later on, but um, trying to speak in images with them and hey, make a pass and, and then go do something else with it. We started talking about not letting the ball stick, and I think it was, became a visual for them. And, you know, when they start making shots, then it's just get out of their way and make sure that they're rested uh, and in the right spots. Second question was they tried to half court trap you a little bit, and that seemed to kind of play in your favor a little bit. Yeah, you know, um, that's what they've done ever since coach has been there. You know, it's coming, you prepare for it. We actually got them into a half court trap. It's usually that full court, but, um, you know, our, our kids love to see that because it, we, we've got a good plan for it. We've got the personnel that can get into seams and spots. Uh, and, and I, they wanted that matchup. This is a matchup they love to play. We called one set play today, and it didn't work. So that's overrated when it comes. But you've got you to get them in the right spots and then trust them to go play. We've played 30 games now about. Is that right? If you don't trust them by now, then, and then we've probably done something wrong in the offseason. Tyler from Sports and Culture. Ramirez had – she was 3 for 14 shooting tonight, but she was extremely aggressive on the defensive end. Yep. Can you talk about the importance of staying active defensively despite having a bad offensive night? She's been the key for us when we have a big player around the basket. She's such a good clogger, not the dancer, but the, the, the person that goes down and, and makes Unique Thompson's life hard. She was in the right spot. She tipped a lot of balls. And, you know, I'll take the exact same 14 shots she got tomorrow – and she's going to make seven or eight of them. It's just uh, it got in her own head a little bit, and you know that kid well enough to know that um, she'll shoot the next time she's open. But her defense has been great all year. Uh, she's not going to necessarily go steal it from you, and she's not going to block shots, but she seems to always be in the right spot for us, and she's really good at following game plans. Uh, she can really take Coach Todd's words and his coaching and, and go out and, and help our team. That, that was what she did today to help our team win was defend. 17 three-pointers today, which I believe is an SEC record, yeah. tournament Somebody record. Said, yeah. uh, Tara, my stat girl over here. And uh, so I had the pleasure of sitting beside Gary Blair today while you guys were playing, and he joked that, you know, they're going to continue to hit those. We just have to make sure that uh, they don't hit as many 
yeah. know, tomorrow. So can you kind of talk about, you know, A&M and obviously how successful you were behind the three today, but you got A&M tomorrow. How long did it take him to explain that to you? Was it more under over five minutes or because it would I'm sure there was more to it than that. And diagrams involved probably. And there's no telling. But no, I mean, you know, I saw Coach sitting over there. He didn't need to be here. He knows what we're going to do. We talk about it weekly. We talk about it uh, all the time. So they will make our life hard. Bob Starkey's back there developing a plan. Uh, it will be – they will be more guarded tomorrow, I guarantee you. Uh, we'll have to score around the basket a little bit. We'll probably have to set some ball screens. It'll be a different way to get open. But, you know, if we end up with 42 threes tomorrow, I'd be shocked. Attempts. I don't care about the makes the attempt number. He will be upset if that number is probably half of that. So uh, we'll have some adjustments for them too. Uh, I know a few of his play calls and we'll try to be ready, but um, they will have a different approach for sure. But, you know, our goal is to always be able to make any defense wrong. So if we shoot it that well, I, I, like we made 17, but I wouldn't have been surprised if you had told me we made 25. I mean, the shots that we got, I would normally expect us to hit around 50 or 60 percent of those. So. Tyler Butler again. Last year uh, in this tournament, Chelsea had to put on heroic performances every single game. Mm -hmm. Can you speak on the balance of this team compared uh, compared to last year's team? Yeah, and I'm going to run off of your question a little bit there, Kyle. You were here with us last year, and you saw what she did. She's had a better year this year than she did last year, and nobody that's not around our team would agree with that because they get too buried in a stat sheet. Uh, she's had a great year for us. She has – incorporated having another offensive weapon on the floor like Amber. She's incorporated having a true freshman point guard that distributes in, I, in uh, Michaela and then in IT, where last year we had a scoring point guard. So the adjustments that she's made in her game, she's been uh, stellar in all of that. Um, and then, you know, overall with the team, just that leadership role that we needed filled when we lost Jalen Mason. Um, you know, Jalen's over there on the sideline with us, but she can't play. So uh, Chelsea has, you know, took on some of that, accepted some of that responsibility. So um, I know it was good for us to be able to put other people around her to where she didn't need a heroic effort. She just needed to do what she did today, stand out there and, and catch it and make, what'd she go, five of eight? You know, that's what she can do. So I'm glad that um, she was able to do that in this building. It's been a really special place for her. We have one final question for Coach Neighbors. No, you're good. Okay. This is courtesy of Tara, uh, Pick Trail Nation. Uh, just talking about Alexis Tolfrey, 30 points, but 20 of your first half points up in her game today. I thought she settled us down. You know, once we saw her make one or two and she got her little celebration going, she, you know, I'm always worried when I see the top of her head because she's looking down at her shoes. It's good to always see her smile. So she kept us in it, kept us going. She was out, first one out of the locker room passing to Amber. I don't know if anybody else caught that, but she I don't think she took one shot during warm-ups. She got the ball, and she was like, Amber, here we go. Just keep, get, keep your hand, you know. She passed to Amber the entire halftime. So that's just the kid that, that she is. Um, but she definitely, her play, not just the scoring, she was driving it and kicking it out and um, doing a lot of things that we needed to have, winning plays. We need a lot of front, and she had a lot of them in that first half. Thank you, Coach. We Thank look forward to watching you tomorrow. Uh, me too. I can't wait for the press conferences with you and Gary. Oh, no.